morning hi everybody Simon's Tales number seven we left it off that meeting very awkward up at the posh place on the hill so after that meeting uh, we're gonna call Sue's husband the husband we're just gonna call him the husband <laughs> male boss he upped and went and said you know, the last thing we left it was I was going to go back to the bar sort things out so he upped and left um, and Sue had said to him look I want to talk to Simon I've got to sort some accommodation and stuff out and he upped and went and shook my hand we fixed everything I wasn't mad on the guy because I didn't really know him and after the conflicts and things that had happened so as it stood the bar soy BJ fun bar had been closed for two days I had a room in there with a jacuzzi. I'd been staying with Frozen for a couple of nights. Um, luckily put me up. And uh, this was all, you know, a complete turnaround in 48 hours. Remember, I'd gone to Asia. I wanted to work and uh, <sighs> I started off well. <laughs> oh dear. Now, I'm guessing looking back on it more and more I think about it this the male boss and Sue they, they had several businesses Sue was into real estate he was into money lending they had the soapy massage um, and I think the soapy massage was Sue's made a success of it and then he took it over whether it's about face and look at me I'm fantastic I don't know and this bar suddenly started making good money and he'd spotted it it turned out one of the things I did find out was the security guard I think he was called Rung and his wife the cleaner who lived in the bar upstairs the security guard was in fact the boss's Mr. Boss uh, close associate he was his lookout his snitch or whatever you want to call him and he'd been feeding back information as well and obviously everything looking good and going well he's thinking I'm gonna take this business over now and Sue can have the soapy massage because it's just not doing brilliant it's ticking over so whether that was the behind it I don't know but anyway so up he went from the meeting off he went and Sue I sat down ordered another drink she was paying why not so I've just been given a bit of a backhander for what had happened she was very grateful for keeping her other half out of trouble and I didn't really understand at the time everything that was going on there was obviously a lot of politics in the background with their marriage and things at this point Sue said look um, sort my husband out I don't think um, Frozen will probably want to work with him she said but get out of Frozen, get her in tonight, get the girls in, any girls that turn up that don't want to continue working, send them to me at the Soapy, I'll sort the salaries out, hopefully we won't lose too many girls, um, we did get info out to some of them, get it open, let's get money coming back in again, and uh, then find another manager, suitable, put them together, Mr Boss and the manager, and you know then we'll pull the girls in the future if needed or we'll get new girls she said if frozen when you get hold of it if she doesn't want to know this guy if there's a problem I'll tell her I'll keep her on salary right through till we get another bar she said I've got some ideas I'll jump straight on it she said right for the accommodation for now she says and I remember I, I wasn't on the bike I didn't have my bike that was still down at the bar she said just round the corner I've got a place come and have a look now we'll have this drink jump in the car we'll show you this place if not I've got somewhere else and we'll sort that out now and she said you're on full salary don't worry and you'll get a bonus for sorting all this out everything's gone on I'll look after you now I didn't really understand why she was being so nice you know they could have just fired me and said go away and but a lot to do with losing face and everything what had happened so, okay, you know, I got a wedge full of money in my pocket and can you give me a new accommodation? I like the jacuzzi. I bet the next place we won't have a jacuzzi. Finished our drinks, 
out we went, jumped in her car, literally uh, about a quarter of a mile away, pulls around a corner, and there's a row of terraced houses uh, up on the hill, up on Potato Hill. So get out of the car by this one, and end terrace. And she said, this is mine, it's empty. If you want, you can have it, and I'll furnish it. So I'm like, well, I've got to look inside. And she opened the doors. It was a terrace, so, so end of terrace. There was a position in front behind the gate for parking a car or bikes or whatever. In we went, and it was three story. And it was old fashioned wood, floors and stairs, and it was empty, it felt horrible dark dingy but it, it was like three bedrooms kitchen you know it was a full house and i said to her, i you know this seems crazy spending money on this for furniture for me rattling around here on my own i said it's way too big i don't need a house i said you know you're better off renting it out and she said okay she said i understand she said i just thought i'd give you you know it's a bit of an upgrade but i, I fully understand and it's way out of town she said, come on, we'll go to see my friend. Okay, back in the car. Just been offered a house, free. Hmm. Could have had some wild parties in that house. I could have rented all the rooms out. I didn't think at the time. I could have got loads of girls in there living there. Didn't think. Hindsight, good thing, eh? Jumped in the car, back down to Patea, up to... Oh, well, it was behind Third Road. It was up somewhere near the main um, Sukhumvit Road, Bangkok to Rayong Road, and it was way back. Come up this lane, pulled in, brand new block of, well, you can't say apartments. They were a complex, yellow, brand new, pulled in, out we got office there's a parking space for a load of bikes there's car park at the front um, there's water machine laundry machines all this underneath the first section you walked in office on the left walked in to her best friend or it's her partner I don't know woman partner business grabbed a key off this woman she said come on upstairs one floor room right above where I was I think it was one floor, maybe two floors. Anyway, brand new room, uh, 35 square meters, shower, um, toilet, sink in a little room at the back, a very small balcony with a table and two chairs on, plastic. But looking, you could, if you leant forward and looked down, you could see the sea. But it was a distance away, a good mile away, but you could catch it a glimpse. Brand new double bed, um, desk, mirror, dressing table, whatever, with a seat, a couple of chairs and a coffee table, tiled floor, all brand new. And Sue said, she didn't tell me if it was her business as well, but she said, an aircon and a fan in there as well. She said, um, this is 5,000 baht a month plus aircon plus all the rest. She said, you can have it free. She said, "There's a brand. it's all brand new. She said, I will send one of the soapy girls, if you like this room, to the shop and get you bedding, um, kettle, microwave, all the bits and pieces, and uh, get it put in here for you later today. Just like that. And we'll get a key now from downstairs. I'll pay for it. You don't have to pay for anything. I mean, it was a brand new room didn't have a jacuzzi she said stay here we'll get her another bar she said I've got an idea and you'll be able to move again then oh, musical chairs moving around okay I said this is fine absolutely perfect thank you she said I'll get one of the girls a couple of hours and stuff will be here you head it's only lunchtime you know just after lunch she said you head go to buck go and sort the bar out get your bike um, she said I'll also send the two boys, I won't say their names, but the two boys that are in the money lending business, cashier's husband, one of them, I'll send them to your room at the bar, get them to move everything of your stuff and bring it up here today for you. So you don't have to lift a th finger. She didn't say that because her English wasn't that good, but you know what I mean. Like, what? It's like VIP treatment. What on earth? 
I said, okay, that's absolutely fine. She said, keep the keys to the other bar because you're still going to be the manager, even though Mr. Boss is the boss. I won't come, she said, very rarely. Try and uh, get that running again. Report back to me. She said, so come and see me lunchtime each day. Give me the details of what's going on. She said, sort frozen out, sort the girls out. Just smooth the way and make life easy for me for the next few weeks. I just kept saying, oh, I'll give you a bonus. <laughs> Dream, sort of. So, I didn't have to lift a finger. Sure enough, the afternoon, I mean, from that point, I went off to get some lunch. Rang Frozen and uh, got her down. She came down. We got some lunch together. Yeah, we did have lunch together, but she was, I'd eaten mine before she got there. Anyway, she came down. So, when I got some food, she came down and I told her the whole story. Again, she knew it anyway because I'd been staying with her, but told her what had happened in the meeting and all the rest of it. And she sort of, wow, you know, fantastic. And I said to her, look, because she didn't like this guy, Mr. Boss, at all. I said, Sue wants us to get the bar going again. But if you don't want to work or like him, you're on full pay till we get the next bar. And Sue wants to see you and sort all that out and help her and all that. So she's like, well, okay, I'll come in tonight at five and see what happens. Okay. So we had the lunch. She knew the full score. Off she went. It must have been about three. And I headed to the Soy BJ Fun Bar off walking street I remember it well um, got a bike taxi down to walking street and then I just wandered around the corner my bike was there uh, inside the place was locked up there was no one there well apart from the cleaner lives there and the security and he was in the bar sat at the bar drinking draft beer when I unlocked the front door and walked in look on his face he was shocked to see me walk through the door um, it was pinching the beer so he he immediately he sort of he'd been caught and he's like uh, and he not the beer but he said oh, I go room and went oh yeah my bike was inside so that was good I had the key in my pocket so anyway, I went in locked the door behind me went upstairs packed my stuff and then I had a rucksack and a couple of bits and pieces dumped it all on the bed and left it came back downstairs put the key for that room six in behind the cashier's desk because the bar was closed I could go in in the in the bar behind the bar didn't have a work permit could have had one in hindsight again I should have said yes got the work permit sorted out but back 15 years ago it just wasn't really a problem it wasn't a problem so I went behind the bar put the keys in had a scout round, onto the computer, set up the music for the night, and I started it running, quiet, because I was on my own. Got myself a beer, free of course, and it was, yeah, must have been about four o'clock. So, front door was locked, I actually unlocked it, opened the door, for business. I thought, just in case someone comes, all the girls come early. And, uh, I got on the pool table. I was playing pool. <laughs> so about quarter to five, they're frozen turned up and a few girls started turning up. And they're all, I could see by the questions, what's going on, what happened. Now, before this incident, we had about 15 girls um, on the books. The soapy girls had gone. We'd got about 15 of our own girls. Between that time and say six o'clock, about 12 girls turned up, three just didn't show. And out of those 12 girls, four said, don't want to work after they'd heard the story and they'd seen what had happened. Don't want to work here. So Frozen sent them off to sue to get paid, said fine. But if you want to come back, you can. So we had eight girls, they were still happy working and they were there getting the makeup done and all the rest of it and food. And at this point, Frozen was happy. Everything was back to normal. Turn the music up a bit. Now the cashier turned up, um, the original cashier, and another girl. This other girl was Mr. Boss's cashier, and the cashier was was Sue's cashier. They had their own cashiers. Yeah, 
I'm like, mm, okay. And the cashier, Sue's cashier, was brilliant. She told Frozen, who told me, that she was going to work tonight, teach the other girl all the bits about the rooms and everything else. And then she was going back to the soapy to work. Oh, okay, so we were going to lose the cashier as well. Shame. And this other cashier I didn't know. I'd seen her around, but didn't know her. Come seven, eight o'clock, Mr. Boss turned up. And we're going to leave it there. Now, let's carry on a bit more. Eh, <laughs> come on. Yeah, why not? Mr. Boss turned up. Came in. Smiled at Frozen. His, the security guard. While the bar was open, he used to sit across the road on the steps. Drinking or just watching. He came running in behind Mr. Boss. And Mr. Boss went up to the by the pool table. There was a table in the corner. Sat down with the security. Mr. Boss smiled at Frozen. Didn't say anything to me. Up they went and chatted. Okay. Anyway, then the security ran off back outside. And um, the Mr. Boss came over to me and said, Hi, Simon. Thanks for opening. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for helping. Um, did I mention my stuff had been moved in the afternoon? The boys turned up, grabbed my bags and took it off. So he asked, had I sorted accommodation out? And I said, yep. Sue had got me a room way back. And uh, so the room upstairs was available and I'd given it to the cashier. So that was an extra room. And that my stuff had gone. So I wouldn't be living there. I'll keep keys. And he agreed. I said, I've got the bike. It's my bike I'm going to be using. The sewer sort. He said, yeah, no problem. Then he beckoned Frozen over. Uh, and they talked in Thai. And Frozen um, interpreted. Basically, he said to her, uh, thanks for everything but I've got my own mama's hand coming so I don't need you anymore <laughs> get lost and Frozen says to me what is that and I'm like ah, I said Mr Boss I said Frozen and me we work together everything's good this is a mistake and he's like no no I've got mama's son, my own she's going to take over fair enough I said okay so I said Frozen well you're on pay so Scarpa, tell the girls another mamma son's coming and uh, hmm, I'll speak to you tomorrow so he fired Frozen <laughs> she didn't mind, she's on pay what the hell <laughs> so it was getting, this was just getting worse and worse anyway, there you go, you've had your time I'll see you on the next one bye for now